In this lesson, we're going to be talking about integer operations. The first thing we need to take a look at is the number line up at the top of the page. Notice that this number line consists of positive numbers, which are represented in blue, and negative numbers that are represented in red. Notice what the numbers look like. Notice that these numbers are not fractions and they're not um, decimals. They're nice, um, solid numbers that are both positive, negative, and zero. So we're going to be using this number line to work through these integer operations below. Let's first talk about integer addition. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add two integers. So let's start with the first one, 10 plus negative seven. <clears throat> so what this is going to look like on the number line is you're going to begin with the first number that you see. So the first number that I see is positive 10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a little dot over positive 10 on my number line. And I'm going to add negative seven. Well, when you're adding a negative number, you're actually moving to the left. It's kind of like you're subtracting. So by moving to the left, I'm gonna move seven spaces. So let's go ahead and move this seven spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see by adding negative seven, that's going to leave me with positive three. And that's how you add integers. <clears throat> okay, let me go ahead and raise this up at the top and try the next one. Let's do one plus negative five. Okay, so I'm gonna start at positive one. So I'm gonna put a little dot there and I'm going to add negative five. So that means I'm going to move in the left hand direction because I'm adding a negative, which is just like subtracting. So I'm gonna move one, two, three, four, five. That leads me to negative four. So one plus negative five is negative four. All right, let's try the third one. Negative two plus five. Well, this time I'm actually going to start in the negative number. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little dot on negative two. And this time I'm adding positive five. So I'm adding five. By adding five, I'm going to be moving in the right direction. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five spaces to the right, leaving me at positive three. Okay, and the last one here, negative seven plus negative three. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start at negative seven, so I'm gonna put a little dot there, and I'm adding negative three. So by adding negative three, that's really subtracting. I'm moving it to the left, or I'm trying to make the number more negative. So I'm going to move one, two, three spaces to the left, leaving me at negative 10. Okay, that is a little review of integer addition. Now let's go ahead and move on to integer subtraction. So for this next one, it's going to be a little bit different, but I'm still going to show you how to do it on the number line. Eight minus three. Well, we probably all know eight minus three, but let me show you what it looks like up here on the number line. I'm going to start at positive eight. So I'm gonna put a little dot at positive eight, and I'm going to subtract three. So subtracting three move, means you're moving in the negative direction. You're moving to the left. So I'm going to move one, two, three spaces to the left, leaving me at positive five. Let's look at another one. Negative two minus five. Well, let's start at negative two minus five. Well, subtracting five means you're moving to the left. So I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five spaces to the left, leaving me at negative seven. Now the next two are a little bit different. Four minus negative six. So this is tricky. Now, before we start working on the number line, I wanna show you a little trick. To make this way easier than it looks right now, watch what you're going to do. Anytime that you have two negatives that are right next to each other, but kind of like cut in half by a set of parentheses, here's what you do. Whoops. What we're gonna do is we're actually going to combine them like this. We're going to connect them and then we're going to make a plus sign. Because any time you have a negative and a negative next to one another, it actually means addition. I know, it's crazy, but it works every time. 
it makes this problem so much easier because now this is just saying 4 plus 6. And the reason behind that is because anytime you have a negative and a negative, that's called a double negative. And a double negative is a positive. So that's essentially what we did there. So on the number line, it would look something like this. We would start at positive 4, and we want to move in the positive direction six spaces. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, leaving us at positive 10. All right, and the last one here on this page, negative 2 minus negative 8. You can see that we have that double negative thing again. So before I even begin this problem, I'm just going to go ahead and combine these negatives, and I'm going to make it a plus. So really, the new problem that I'm working with is negative 2 plus 8. And any time that you make this little plus sign, it totally eliminates those negative signs. You've already, you've taken over them, so it just turns into a plus. So on the number line, we're going to start at negative 8, and we're going to add, I'm sorry, we're going to start at negative 2, and we're going to add 8. So I'm going to move to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, leaving me at positive 6. And that's how you add and subtract integers. Now, as the integers get a little bit bigger, um, it becomes a little bit more challenging, but with a lot of practice with these, you get very good at them. Let's go ahead and take a look at multiplying and dividing now. Multiplying and dividing um, has a couple rules that you have to remember, and it'll be really helpful to you um, in solving these types of problems. So here are the rules up top. When multiplying and dividing, if you have the same signs, then your answer is always going to be positive. What I mean by signs is that both numbers have to either be positive or both numbers have to be negative, one or the other. And then likewise, if you have different signs, your answer is always going to be negative, meaning if you have a positive number and a negative number, your answer will be negative. Let's take a look at some examples. 3 times 4. This little dot here is a representation of multiplication. So 3 times 4, you can see that we have two numbers and both numbers are positive. Since both numbers have the same sign, this answer is going to be positive. So the answer here will be positive 12. Let's look at the second one, 32 divided by negative 8. Notice that I have a positive number in the top and a negative number in the bottom. I have two different signs on my numbers. So really, this is going to be a negative answer. So 32 divided by negative 8 is going to leave us with negative 4. All right, how about this next one? Notice also the different um, ways that you can represent division. This is another way you can represent division. So negative 48 divided by negative 6. You can see that we have the same signs on both of those numbers. They're both negative. So that means that I'm going to have a positive answer. And negative 48 divided by negative 6 will give us positive 8. This next one is multiplication. So you can see by this first one that we solved, we, used, uh, we represented multiplication by a little dot. But this is another way to represent multiplication with these um, two sets of parentheses. So negative 6 times 5, you can see that both numbers have different signs, so we're going to have a negative answer. And our answer here will be negative 30. 77 divided by negative 11. We have different signs, so that will give us a negative answer of negative 7. 2 times negative 7. Now notice that the 2 does not have parentheses around it, and that's okay. But if it looks like this with um, a little parenthesis next to the 2 around the negative 7, that is another representation of multiplication. Be very careful not to mistake this for subtraction. So positive 2 times negative 7 is going to give us negative 14. 24 divided by 3. So they're both positive numbers. So I'm going to have a positive answer of 8. And then the last one, negative 9 times 3. So I have two numbers with different signs. That's going to give me negative 27. And there you have multiplication and division. Now that we've gone through all the operations, let me show you four examples of some applications of integers. I'm going to be using all four of the operations in these problems. So let's take a look at the first one. Jamie is $21 in debt. 
If she is paid $50 at the end of the week for babysitting, how much money will she have in her account? So, um, <coughs> the key here is to know is debt. Um, debt is something that means that you owe someone something. So that means that you are below zero and you've got to get yourself back up over zero on the number line. So here, Jamie's in debt $21. So we're going to represent that by negative 21. But she's paid $50. Paid $50 means that we're adding $50 into her account. So let's go ahead and add 50. And we want to know if we do that and she adds 50 into her account, how much money will she have in her account at that point? And will she uh, get above zero? And she will. She'll have $29 in her account if she adds that $50 in, So, which is really good. So $29 is our answer to the question. Let's look at the second one. The temperature at 6 a.m. was negative 12 degrees Fahrenheit. At, at 3 p.m., the temperature was 32 degrees Fahrenheit. What was the difference in temperature? Well, for this one, I like to represent this on a number line so you can actually visually see what's happening here. So here's a little number line, and you can see that I have zero right here. And it says that the temperature at 6 a.m. was negative 12 degrees. So let's just go ahead and represent that by right here. So that's about negative 12. But at 3 p.m., the temperature was 32. So I'll represent that somewhere around here on the number line. And we want to know what the difference in the temperature was. So we're trying to figure out what was the difference in the temperature over that amount of time. So the word difference means subtraction. So let's go ahead and subtract these numbers. I'm always going to take my higher number, which is 32, and I'm going to subtract my lower number, which is negative 12. Now, you may ask yourself, well, why didn't you write it like this? 32 minus negative 12. Well, to be honest, when you have two operations next to each other like that, it looks kind of silly. So we separate it with a parenthesis to make it a little bit more professional. All right, so to do that, um, let's go ahead and solve it now. 32 minus negative 12. We have that double negative situation. So let's go ahead and combine the negatives and make it a positive. And we're going to add them. 32 plus 12 will give us 44. So our answer here will be 44 degrees Fahrenheit is the difference in temperature. All right, I've got two more problems for you, one multiplication and one division. From sea level, a submarine descends 40 feet per minute. Where is the submarine in relation to sea level five minutes after it starts descending? So the key word in this problem is descends. We know that descends means to subtract or to go down. So let's go ahead and start this off by representing our descending 40 feet per minute by saying negative 40. Another really important uh, word in this problem is per or per minute. Per means multiplication. So if we're saying negative 40 feet per minute and we know that the submarine is moving down five minutes. So that's really saying negative 40 times five because for each minute we want to figure out uh, how far it's going down. So negative 40 times five. Well, that's, we know that a negative times a positive is going to give us a negative and that's going to give us negative 200. And we'll represent that by saying negative 200 feet. Now, another way that you could state this answer, but you have to be very particular about it, you could say this. You could say 200 feet below sea level. Let me go ahead and write that out. 200 feet below sea level. Now, I say that you need to be specific about that because the word below means negative. So you can't say negative 200 feet below sea level because that would give you that double negative again. So either one of these is a great way to represent this answer. Okay, the last problem here. During a 12 hour period, the temperature dropped 48 degrees Fahrenheit. How many degrees did the temperature drop each hour? Okay, well, we know that it dropped a total of 48 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and represent that by negative 48. 
And we also want to know how many degrees did the temperature drop each hour? Well, to do that, that means that we need to divide it by the time period, which is 12 hours. So we have a division problem here, and we also have a negative divided by a positive. So when we divide that, that will give us negative 4. So to answer the question, how many degrees did the temperature drop each hour? We can say that a couple different things. We could say negative 4 degrees. We could say that that is our answer. Um, or we could say, um, well, let's say this. The temperature dropped 4 degrees per hour. So you can actually write out the answer as well. But in this case, the word dropped means negative. So as long as you're representing that negative in your answer, um, the answer is going to be perfectly fine. But each, either one of these answers, just like the last one, will, will be perfectly fine to work with. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson on integer applications and integer operations.